Hi, I'm Tanner, and today I'm going to show you how we achieve a fairly consistent result using water-based leather dyes. And in case you're not familiar with us, my wife Amy and I design and make all of the work that we sell. We also photograph a lot of our own pieces in creative ways. There are many different options for dyeing your leather project. You may have heard about oil, alcohol, or water-based dyes. There are pros and cons to each type of dye, but today I'm focusing exclusively on water-based dye. Some of the brands available are EcoFlow and Feebings dyes, but there are other brands available from different leather suppliers as well. This is the way we do our leather dyeing for most of our leather items. It's not the only way to do it, but we have worked out this process over the last 10 years through a lot of trial and error. You may have seen more rugged or antique dyeing processes achieved with just one coat of dye. That is a different style of finish and it may suit your piece better, not to mention it's much more affordable to dye that way. Some of the pros of using a water-based dye is that it has a low or no smell at all. Deep intense colors, you can also dilute it with water, they're resistant to bleeding, the color doesn't rub off, and they keep some of the leather's softness as well. You don't need a solvent to clean up the mess either. But on the other hand, the dye will stain most things it gets on. That includes your clothing and you. Some of the cons of using water-based dyes include the leather can be extremely slow to dry, they are expensive so larger projects can easily go through a full bottle, you may need multiple coats to get a deep consistent color, and if you aren't careful applying your first coat, you can leave permanent streaking and lines. There are cons to each type of dye, but if you're looking for a fairly consistent dye that can be dip dyed or only use one coat, you can try an oil dye. Or if you're looking for a fast drying dye, you can try an alcohol based dye. For each color of dyes, we use labeled containers and keep each sponge stored in the containers to prevent confusion. If you don't dilute the dye, you can pour it back into the original container. One of the ways you can apply dyes is by using a rag, foam brush, daubers, and sponges. Depending on the project you're doing, one might be a better option than the other. For this project, I'm using sponges that I cut into squares. Now on to using the dye. You want to make sure your piece of leather is completely dry before adding any color to it at all. You need to shake the bottle before each use as some of the color pigments sink to the bottom. If you don't shake it, you'll get more of the water and less of the dye, resulting in a much lighter color. If you're doing production work, restocking for stores, or sending out orders where you reproduce your work, you will want to have the color turn out fairly consistent every time, and in order to achieve this, you do need to shake the bottle with each use. If you're mixing the colors, you will most likely want to write down the ratios of each color of dye or dye to water. If you dilute your dyes, you may want to store any extra in a separate container with a secure lid rather than adding them back to your original dye container, as this will dilute the whole container over time. We use our own special blend to achieve some of our customers' favorite colors, and we find the EcoFlow dye blends and mixes just like regular watercolor paints. Occasionally, you might get a certain color or bottle of dye where the dye is a little thicker or more pigmented. When you become familiar with the correct color of the dye, you'll be able to tell right away and you can dilute it to get it back to the regular consistency. If you want, you can use a little water on the sponge or any dye applicator. The dye will turn out the same if you choose not to use the water, but you may absorb an excess amount of dye into the sponge. Once you have your leather project and dye applicator of your choice, you will want to spread it out as evenly and quickly as you can. When it is spread over the entire surface, you can use circular motions to rub the dye into the leather. You want to make sure the entire surface is completely coated, wiping any excess dye off with a rag or lint-free cloth. How long your project will take to dry and set depends on the thickness of the leather, color of the dye, amount of dye, and type of vegetable tan leather you are using. To get consistent results with minimal streaking and intense colors, you will want to wait until the first coat is completely dry and set before adding the next coat. This can take up to 12 hours depending on the leather and even the temperature of your studio. I notice when it's colder out, it actually takes the dye a lot longer to dry and set. We find it's a good idea to add up to four coats of dye. When we're doing outdoor shows, the sun can wash out the color or even lighten it noticeably where there are bends in the leather. 
Using four coats of dye, we were able to help prevent the leather from noticeably bleaching out in most cases, as well as cover most of the grain corrector and inconsistencies in the leather. There are some pieces of leather, like this one, that need five coats to get a deep black color. Each coat after the first coat can be dyed in the same way, but the first coat is the coat where you will have to use the most dye to saturate the leather item. Each additional coat will require up to 12 hours to dry and set as well. This leather is six to seven ounce and will eventually be a journal. So right around where it bends along the flap and the stitch area, you want to make sure there's enough dye. On this piece, there is an embossed stamp. So this area will take the color a little differently than the carved or non-carved pieces. The leather is compressed in this area, making it more difficult for this part of the leather to absorb the dye. This leather is a four to five ounce. It's pretty dry. You can tell from the stiffness, so I already know this piece is going to absorb quite a bit of dye. The last type of leather I will be showing is the milled or textured vegetable tan leather. This leather takes the longest to dry before you add the next coat. You have to be especially careful or it will turn out blotchy. After the front is dried, you can dye the inside with the color of your choice. Some colors will be more blotchy than others. If you have holes in your project, a foam brush or dauber with a minimal amount of dye helps prevent any bleeding from the front. The total process of dyeing an item can take up to three days, especially if you're doing multiple colors on a piece or if you want to achieve a rich color. In the next video, we'll show you the completed pieces. If you want to know about other types of dye, please comment below. And in other videos, we will be showing different types of finishes, how we use them, and when to use them. Also, if you want to see more tutorials, learn more about the craft business, and see behind the scenes videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell as well.